Hey everyone, it's Jen Sheffer, and in this training tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use Google Slides to create your own virtual classroom. So you'll want to start by opening up a Google Slide presentation. And once you have a blank slide, the first thing you're going to do is change your background to be a walls and floor background. So the way you do that is you're going to click on the slide menu and you're going to click on change background. From here, you're going to click on choose image and you're going to click on Google image search and you're going to type in walls and floor background. I like this one here and you can choose anyone you want. And once you have made your selection, you will click on insert in the bottom right and then you're going to click on done. So now you have your walls and your floor. Next thing you can do is start adding elements to your classroom. And so I'm going to show you how you can add transparent images from within slides and using a website called Remove BG. So we're gonna start by going uh, into Google Images through slides. So we're gonna click on, Im or excuse me, insert, and we're gonna click image and then search the web. So the first thing I'm going to put in my room is a rug. So I'm going to do rug transparent. So we can start with the big, the big items first. So I like this rug here. I'm going to drag it in. And you have no budget, so you can, the sky's the limit. You can look for anything you want, top of the line. So you can drag and resize and position the rug exactly how you want it. And then once you're done that, we're going to add... I'll add a desk, not that we'll be sitting at our desk much, but just to, just to have it in there and just to show you, we'll have a desk. I'm going to resize that, position this in the corner, maybe make it a little bit bigger, drag and drop just to resize our items in our classroom. And now I'm going to look for a chair. I found a great chair for my room. Looks nice and comfortable and ergonomically correct for me. But most of us are usually not sitting during the day, that's for sure, right? So we're gonna have our chair, we'll move it here. And last but not least, I'm going to add my Bitmoji. So you'll need to install the Bitmoji extension um, in the Chrome Web Store. And once you do that, you'll notice that you have the shortcut to the extension on your toolbar. So you're going to click on it. You'll log in um, using the same email that you created. You can create the Bitmoji either on your iPad or on your phone. And then once you log in with the Chrome extension, um, that, that Bitmoji that you've created will carry over. So you can search Bitmojis that have lots of stickers. You can search by keyword. You could say miss you, um, amazing, whatever you want. But if you want basic, just I want emoji standing. Um, I recently discovered you just search the word pose um, and you have all these just kind of standard poses. I was having a tough time uh, because everything I was finding had stickers. So I just wanted the just a sitting emoji. So there I am. I found my sitting emoji and I'm going to just move my emoji onto my screen into my classroom. I'm going to drag it, reposition it. My feet usually don't touch the floor anyway because of, you know, how tiny I am, but there you go. So there's me in my classroom so far. So good. So now I want to um, add a TV. Um, and I'm going to embed a YouTube video onto that TV. So I'm going to go to insert image. I'm going to search the web here and I'm going to look for a wall mount TV. So you can get lost in finding great images for your room. It's a lot of fun. Um, the time will go by and you'll say, wow, I've been, I've been at this for a while now because you, you can have quite a bit of fun with this. So just going to kind of resize my, my TV a bit here. And then I'm going to show you how I change the angle of it. I'm going to make this smaller. And so now what I want to do to kind of change that angle 
of my TV and you can do this for any object. So don't be discouraged if you, if you find something and you think, well, that's not facing the right way. What you'll do is you're gonna click on format options and click on size and rotation. And this is where you can play with um, where the um, object needs to go. Do you need to flip it horizontally, vertically, so on and so forth. So now the TV is positioned where I want it. Um, and now I can add a, whoops, go back to that slide. Now I'm going to embed a YouTube video onto this TV or into the TV. So I started by creating a welcome message um, for my students. Um, welcome to my new virtual classroom. This might be a good way to introduce students and families to this new platform you'll be using. So I made a video on my iPad. I uploaded it to my YouTube channel and, and here it is. So I, I'm going to copy the URL here at the top, and then I'm going to go into my Bitmoji scene. I'm going, I'm going to click on insert video, and there it is. I already pasted it in, so I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to click select. Now, if you don't want to put it on YouTube, you can upload the video to your Google Drive. You can change the sharing settings so that anyone with the link can view, and you can do the same thing. Um, that is totally your preference. So you can drag that video over to the screen and you can resize it. And now your students will be able to hear you, see you. You can do this for your morning message. Um, a lot of different creative ways you can use those um, videos there. So a couple other things I wanna show you. I mentioned the remove BG. Um, you can find a lot of images the way I showed you, but if you happen to want something from the web, you can Google image search beanbag chairs and you can find anything that has a transparent or excuse me, that has a background and you can remove it simply by doing the following. So I click on the image that I want. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to select copy image address. So now I've got a URL for that address for that image. So now I have my remove.bg website uploaded and you can see here, I already have been practicing this, but I'm going to click on URL. The first time you use this, it'll look a little bit different for you, but you just wanna find where it says, drop a file, paste an image or URL. So you'll click on that. You will paste the URL for the image. It's going to upload the image on the right. It has, the image with the background. On the left, that background has been removed. So now you can right click, hit copy image, and then go into your classroom and paste that beanbag without a background. So when you, um, now that you know how to do this, you really can search any image that you want and put it into your classroom scene, which is a, a great feature. Um, if I want to, now I'm gonna show you how you can link images. So I have a cat in the hat stuffed animal image that I want, and I'm going to link my read aloud to this book, um, to this image. So that's just a creative way of sharing read alouds now. And it's sort of like a little bit of a scavenger hunt for the kids. Um, so I'm going to right click, copy image. I'll show you this one more time. Click on URL, paste the image of the cat in the hat. On the left hand side, the background will be removed. I'm going to right click, copy the image. Go back to my scene, paste the Dr. Seuss cat in the hat stuffed animal. And now I want to link this to an actual read aloud of Cat in the Hat that I found on YouTube. And there's a lot of Burlington teacher read alouds that have been shared, so you can do the same thing. You can link the Burlington teacher read aloud. So what you can do is uh, you could find an image of the book cover and you can link the image. I just chose the stuffed animal. So here's a Cat in the Hat read aloud, or maybe you yourself are making those read aloud. So I'm gonna copy it. The image is selected. I'm going to click insert link right under the help menu. And I'm going to paste that YouTube read aloud and click apply. So that is how you will link images. So if I wanted to put posters on my classroom walls, I can click on the image of the poster and I can link that. So 
In my example, I have a code.org Star Wars poster. I could link that to a code.org uh, Star Wars activity for my students to do. So um, that's um, most of what I want to show you. I do also want to make you aware of a wonderful website that Common Sense um, Media has created. It's called WideOpenSchool.org. So um, if you go to WideOpenSchool.org and you click on I'm an educator, I have put this in the presentation too that I've linked um, and that I've shared with you, you click on grades pre-K to five. One thing that really caught my eye with this website in particular were all of the different um, field trips that they have here. So I can click on the field trips and there's one to the M&M &M factory. So I could, I could find the M&M &M candy characters and I could link uh, the image of the characters to this virtual field trip. And when I click on it, it takes me to a YouTube video. So that is ideal um, for sharing um, different virtual field trips. So again, that's wideopenschool.org. It's a great website with lots of different resources. There's all kinds of subject areas. There's um, emotional well-being resources, um, resources for English language learners. So I highly recommend checking out wideopenschool.org for supplemental resources for your um, students and their families. And Common Sense Media has curated all these resources for us as educators. So that's a, a wonderful thing. Um, but again, the examples show you all the different possibilities um, for creating a room. We can go to insert image, we can search the web, and um, just a different way of sharing your read alouds. You could put in, um, say, a bookcase, for example, and you could fill your bookcase. This is a great one here. You could fill your bookcase with actual covers of books, and all of those books could be linked to read aloud. So if I put this in here, what I would do is I would um, click on arrange and I would do order send to back. So now it's in the background. But again, we need space for um, a bulletin board, um, filing cabinets or what, whatever you have in your classroom. There's lots of different examples that I've shared and um, I hope you feel as though you have um, the knowledge and the tools to start building your own space that will be highly interactive and engaging for students. And when you're done, you will change the sharing settings so that anyone with the link can view. That's very, very important that you do that. This interface has changed somewhat over the last 24 hours, which Google is always doing. Um, but we're going to want to make sure that this is anyone with the link can view. And once that is done, you can um, go to file and an, another safety net to make sure that everything inside your room is clickable um, and accessible to students, regardless of the device that they're using. You'll want to go to file and then publish to the web. You'll click on link and there's a link right here. You will copy and paste this link as a caption at the bottom of your post in Seesaw. So you will upload this into Seesaw and when it appears on the Seesaw canvas, the bottom uh, right-hand side, excuse me, the bottom left-hand side will have uh, your, your caption ability. So just to make sure you understand what I'm saying, I'm gonna just go ahead and show you that as well. So when you're ready, to do that final touch, um, you will be able to do it. Now, this is not a seesaw activity. This is just a post that you want all of your students to see. So there is no student template that they're filling out. So um, you don't have to worry about creating a, an activity template. It's just sharing uh, resources for your room in a very interactive manner. So I'm in a BPS training course right here. And I'm going to click up, click on add post student work. And I'm going to click on upload. I'm going to do select from Google Drive. And when the file is uploaded, it's automatically, Seesaw is automatically going to convert your slide into a PDF that will be clickable. Um, so here is the presentation. 
it's all the slides. In your case, it would just be one slide and you, you can name that slide whatever you want. It can be um, virtual classroom, it could be your name. So this is going just a bit slow. But once it, let's see, let me see if I can just type it in. Okay, there it is. I'm going to hit. Okay, so now it's uploading it. And now I'll be able to show you. Um, I'm going to hide those tools in the bottom. I'm using Screencastify, by the way, um, which is currently uh, free. The premium version is free for educators from now through July. So um, I highly recommend um, getting Screencastify so you can create uh, flipped instructional lessons for your students. Um, and um, it's a very intuitive tool. You can see that there's a thumbnail of me in the bottom. Um, that is not necessary for you to do if you don't want to. You don't have to have your um, little webcam there at the bottom, but you, you certainly can. Um, and slowly but surely that file is uploading um, when you have lots of tabs open that tends to happen but so i've uploaded all the slides in my virtual classroom presentation but again you would have just that one slide so when you're done with with that you have that publishable link that i mentioned so you would click on these um the little caption icon here at the bottom so i'm going to click on that and i'm going to paste that URL, which was, oh, there's my YouTube link. Let me just grab the correct link. I'm going to go into my Bitmoji classroom. I'm going to go to File, Publish to the Web. I've clicked Link. This is the link that I want. It's going to be very long, so you'll know you're doing the right one when you see. It's not a bit.ly or anything like that. It's not a shortened URL. It's this big, long link. So when you're done with that, you can just um, click. And now it's been added. You can see here it says caption added. And then you're going to click the green check mark. And doing that publish link as a caption will ensure that any device um, can be used to access the clickable links that you have um, added to your virtual classroom. Students will be able to click on the links, they'll be able to watch the video, and they don't need an iPad. Um, they can do it from any device. So it might take a, a bit here to upload, but once it does, again, it'll be posted to the student journal. Um, the virtual classroom that you create can be stagnant. It can remain um, the same in terms of your layout and the furniture that you use. Or if you get good at this and you say, you know what, I want to change this up every week, feel free. Um, or, you know, you can just change the bulletin board message in the beginning or your video message or your, your read alouds or whatever it is. So you can make as many um, or as few changes as you want. But what I did in this example is I uploaded the whole entire presentation, but your kids would see you know, just your classroom. And as you can see here, there's lots of different really, really neat examples um, of different classrooms. And hopefully you feel as though you are um, ready to build and you can get creative with your space. Um, you can design the, the dream classroom you've always wanted. And um, I hope this has been helpful. And um, if you wanna come to another training session um, it will be the same one each week, but now you have this resource and um, I can't wait to see what you create. And uh, please send me your feedback, um, comments, questions, concerns, and thank you very much for spending some time with me. I appreciate it. Take care and stay safe and healthy. Bye-bye.